of what? Of the whole earth. Which means that the intention of the Lord, the purpose of the Lord, is that this Christian faith and the Christian thought will go through the whole world. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 14. And ye are the light, the light of where? Of the world. Not just of Jerusalem. And not just of Israel, but the light of the world. Which tells us then that we are not making a mistake. There are people that will see Christianity as the religion of the white people. Other people narrow it down more than that. They say Christianity is the religion of the Jewish people. Just those people in the land of Israel. That's what Christianity is for. But Jesus said no. He died for the whole world. For God so loved. Tell me out loud. The world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever in the whole wide world believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Salt is very important and Jesus Christ said we must be salt. And we are salt already. And we should show that we are salt. We're looking at Leviticus chapter 2 verse 13. Leviticus chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 13, Leviticus chapter 2, verse 13. Here it says, And every oblation, not some, not much, not many, not the majority, but every, every oblation of the meat offering shall be seized, shall, shall thou season with salt. You see that? Everything you offer to the Lord must have salt in it. And Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth. And the Lord is saying, your sacrifice must have salt. Your service must have salt. Your self-denial must have salt. Your soul winning must have salt. Your speech, your speaking must have salt. And your selling, that is, you are selling the gospel. What I mean is that you are publicizing the gospel. Or you are, you know, selling a product. Or you are giving out something. You want people to buy it, to have it, to receive it. It must have some salt. That means you do what you do. Do it with a smile. And do it with some sweetness. And do it with sincerity. Not just that you come to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. And then with frowning and with gloominess and then with sadness. It's like somebody is forcing you to do it. Be excited. Be enthusiastic. And be joyful. And let there be some salt in the sacrifice you're giving unto the Lord. You're serving us in this congress. Come on, serve us with joy. And then you're ministering to us. Serve us with some salt. And if you're giving us food, or you're giving us some chair to sit upon, or you're ministering to us one way or the other, serve with salt. Or you're just greeting your brother, salute them, and greet them with some joy. Let there be salt. And your interaction, everything that you do, both here in the hall, or in any other place where we are, as we interact with one another, let there be some sweetness, some smile, as well as some salt. And the Lord will bless your sacrifice and service in Jesus' name. Every oblation of the meat or prayer shall thou cease it with salt. Neither shall thou suffer the salt, neither shall thou permit the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from the meat offering with all thing, with all, th um, all, all thy offerings thou shalt offer, offer what? Salt. Salt shall be there. Ezekiel chapter 43. Still telling us the same thing, emphasizing the same thing. Let there be salt. And do what you do with some joy, excitement, sweetness, and smile. The people will know you are really happy serving the Lord. Ezekiel 43 verse 24. In verse 24, and thou shalt offer them before the Lord. You notice that? Before the Lord. Anything you are offering, do it before the Lord. Give it before the Lord. And then it says in that verse 24, And the priest shall cast the sword upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering. Tell me the rest. Unto the Lord. At the beginning, before the Lord. At the end, unto the Lord. And then you offer that with salt. That means then you, you want to uh, do everything that you do this year in the home of your family. Let there be some salt with your husband, some sweetness with your wife, some sweetness with your children, some sweetness with your parents, some sweetness with the teachers in school. 
wear a smile. And then we'll tell students, wear a smile. And let people see the sweetness of Christianity that you practice. Let them know that salvation is not a burden. Salvation is a blessing. And because salvation is a blessing, that's why you're, you're greeting everybody and interacting with everybody with that joy of the Lord and of the salt that you put in your service. We're looking in at 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 19. 2 Kings chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. We can say that not just about Jericho. We can say that about any city in this continent. We can say that about any community in this continent. We can say that about any country in this continent. We can say that about the whole of Africa. We can say that about the whole world that the situation you see is pleasant. There are many things to look at and say, this is beautiful. Look at our streets and look at the street lights and look at everything. Look at those gardens and those parks. Everything looks beautiful. But then it says the ground is barren and the water is not. And there are many people that will see the negative thing. Of course, the negative things are there. We cannot close our eyes to them, but what do we do? Do we curse the darkness and not shine the light? And do we just speak against what is going wrong and not speak how to not say how to make it better? Look at what Elisha did in verse, in verse 20. And he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters. Went there for a moment, he went to the spring of the waters. He had some salt, and the Lord is saying, Ye are the salt of the earth. See how the salt, see how the world is corrupt. And see how the earth now has become so polluted, and everything is evil. And you know what the Christians are doing? The salt of the earth, they just hide themselves in their local churches. They hide the salt in the closed uh, bottles, and they are not sprinkling the salt upon the very source. What's the source? The decision makers, that's the source. And all those uh, great people, I, I live place, those, that's the source. And the people that actually lead in those countries, in all countries, as the source, it says, go to them. And then let there be some salt, let there be some transformation, let there be some change. And it is when that change takes place through the salt that will put in the, in the source of water. That's why everything will change. Days are gone when Christians will just hide themselves in their churches, in their denominations, and they'll just they'll be throwing stones at the world at the end and say, the world is bad, the world is corrupt, the world is polluted. You are the salt going there and put some change, some transformation, and some sweetness. We're going to do that in Jesus' name. Our ministry is not just in the church. Our ministry is all over the world. It's on the earth. And we're going to put that salt there. And then we're told in verse 21, and he went forth unto the, on the spring of the waters, and he cast salt in there, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be for thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which is spake, our land will be healed. Our countries will be healed. Our conscience will become better in Jesus' name. The sweetness of salt is not kept to itself, but is shared with all it comes in contact with. Isolated, the salt is useless. That means you are salt. If you isolate yourself, your life will be useless. Your ministry will be useless. The local church, if we isolate ourselves, and we're not doing anything in the community, that the church, local church, is going to be useless. The whole denomination, if whatever we are, whatever our doctrine, whatever our understanding, whatever our experience, whatever light we have, whatever sweetness we have, if we keep to ourselves, we're not going to be able to change anything because isolated the salt is useless. Selfish isolation results in uselessness and worthlessness, but careful, purposeful association may salt valuable to human life. Purposeful interaction and scriptural association brings value and usefulness as salt on the earth. God demands that all our offerings to Him 
in a sanctuary should always be presented with the sweetness of salt. In fact, he calls us to a covenant of salt with him. And then he says, the savor of salt makes us and makes our offering acceptable unto him. We're looking at Job chapter, Job chapter 6. Job chapter 6, we're looking at verse 6. Can that which is on savory be eaten without salt? There are many people that will serve the bread of life or the water of life unto other people. They preach, will preach good doctrine, sound doctrine, but sometimes there's no sweetness in it. The way we put it together, the way we pass it across, it's not inviting, it's not, it's not attractive. And because of that, many people reject the say, that's an hard saying. Who can receive this? It's when you put some sweetness into it and some joy, excitement, and some happiness into what you do. That you'll be able to have what the result the Lord wants you to have. Can, can that, which is on sabri, be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg this year? Are communicating the gospel will be different in Jesus' name. And our interaction with other people, sharing with other people on the street, in the church, in the home, on the bus, anywhere we are, everything is good to have a new method, a new approach in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Colossians 4, verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace. Let your speech be. Sometimes with grace, often with grace, what's the word? Would you notice that this year, if you cannot talk with grace, then you keep quiet until you can talk with grace. If you cannot share with grace, then you keep quiet until you can share with grace. And if you cannot communicate whatever ideas you have, whatever doctrine you have, if you cannot communicate it with the salt of grace, then you keep quiet. Because it says, let your speech be always. Let your preaching be always. Let your sharing be always. Let your testimony be always. And let your communication be always with salt, with grace, seasoned with salt, that she may know how ye ought to answer Everyone, I'm coming back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 13. It says in Matthew chapter 5, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to all the soul disciples. And now you understand that there are some people that have this erroneous idea. Let's say, for example, they're doing something that is not that sweet, not that gracious, not that acceptable. I say, my brother, how could you do that? How could you say, hey, hold on. I'm just a member of the church. I'm not a worker. And then you face the worker and say, my brother, how can you do this? Please hold on for me. I'm not a coordinator. And then you see a coordinator and say, my brother, how could you do that? I hear this about you. And then they say, but I'm not a pastor. I'm not an overseer. What do you expect of me? What they think of is that God requires a different standard from the pastor. As it was from the worker, or as it was from the member of the church. But look at verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth. Talking to everyone. The pastor, the overseer, the coordinator, the leader, the zona leader, the women rest, and the newcomers, and everybody in the kingdom. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth. We're supposed to have that grace within us, and that grace is supposed to make a change in every life. When it says the salt, we're all familiar with that. Number one, the salt is white. Have you seen black salt before? I said, Have you seen black salt before? Let your light be white. Let your light be white. Because this will wash us whiter than snow. White. Salt is white. The language. Nothing, nothing that is colored, nothing that is dark, nothing that is black, nothing that is evil. You are the salt of the earth. Number two, salt is sweet and sweetening. 
you know, there are people you say, hey, sometimes you put two sisters together and a sister needs accommodations. Are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. I find more than being born again. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. What are you looking for? I need an accommodation somewhere. All right, since you are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, I go and share with sister so and so. And we call sister so and so. A sister, uh, what's your experience? Praise the Lord, 19, such and such. I was saved, and then such and such, I was sanctified, and then I was